Hello friends. I finally put my beautiful old dusty books into the bookcase that I found recently while thrifting. I only paid eight dollars for this beauty. It's lightweight but it is extremely extremely sturdy and it does not shimmy. It's just as square and strong and sound as can be. And personally, the old crackle finish is what makes it so delightful to me. It would have been a good deal if it didn't have that very old crackled paint on it. But because it does, that increases its appeal about 10 times to me. At least 10 times. I mean, I love it. I found it at the Amazon Hope Thrift Store in Gunnersville the day that my good best friend Tracy and I went to lunch and we did a little thrifting. Now, I just want you to just survey the awfulness of this corner over here. Um, yeah, terrible, terrible, terrible. Well, we've improved it. We moved to the desk with a computer to um, the back corner bedroom upstairs because uh, we are doing a grand rotation of rooms right now and I'm about to get a lot of good space back. So I had set this bookcase out of the way until I could get to it and I thought, you know, um, I'll just have my friends join me as I do this little very calming project. There was nothing demanding about it, nothing was too difficult, and it's maybe going to be similar to watching paint dry. <laughs> so, you know, if it's super boring, maybe this is something you would like to have on in the background as you do your house cleaning or you cook supper or wash dishes or something. But um, as you can see, I'm, I'm quite casual here. Uh, didn't even fix my hair for this occasion. But I don't fix my hair every day, girls, friends. Uh, maybe y'all do. And if you do, then you are uh, better at it than I am because the days that I'm going to be home I just try to relax just try to focus on other things besides hair and makeup and such hey that rabbit canvas print I love it so much it came from Timu and I paid maybe three or four dollars for the print and about two dollars for the frame which I did paint it was a like a gold oak color so I made that um, more to my liking and it matched the canvas better. That little lamp I thought would be a good way to bring light into the corner, but the shade was wider than the bookcase. So I had to <laughs> I had to run the uh, trace the electric extension cord around to behind my little fake fireplace which I just love that little fake fireplace I got it maybe I don't know 15 years ago it's been a while um, and I have loved loved it it's just been uh, such a good place to decorate all right I have switched out to a little mason jar vintage mason jar lamp that is the blue glass and it has a very small shade on it so uh, I'm gonna keep that lamp kind of in the corner. Uh, you can't see it, but I've got a ceramic garden stool there. There's a power strip behind the fireplace. And um, no wonder we are sore after we do things like this because you strain and you stretch and you, <laughs> you put yourself in positions that you just don't normally every day put yourself in a uh, half lean half crouched hold it in a position of a sit up for like you know 30 seconds that's that's not something I would normally do now I'm noticing in the video that the bookcase kind of shakes when I put something in it but by the time I'm, I'm saying it looks like it shimmies that's only because the weight isn't evenly distribute, distributed yet um, these old books there's so many of them that by the time I get them in there the weight of the books keeps it very secure I'm not afraid that a grandchild will pull it down 
it's it's quite secure and I left a set of encyclopedias in the right hand corner just to keep it it's it's touching it's butting up against one the right side on the wall and the left side against the bookcase of that stack of encyclopedias and that helps strengthen it a little bit I love that copper kettle over there it's from Colonial Williamsburg well just the city of Williamsburg there was um, a lovely thrift store that I found several really vintage wonderful things including that copper kettle and I really don't remember what I paid for it but I don't think it was much because um, I was I remember being super excited excited about it I think it was maybe um, less than ten dollars but for a copper kettle that's as old as that is I just was thrilled 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 you know how when you're thrifting and <laughs> you you put it in your buggy and then you lay something on top of it like I don't know a piece of cloth or linen something just so that nobody can see that it's in your buggy so that nobody reaches in and steals it from you I mean what what causes that paranoid reaction I don't know but but when I find something really good and it's in my buggy I don't want anybody to, well cart I'm in, in Alabama we say buggy but it's a cart to the rest of the world I do think um, but I did get it home and I love it love it so much now as I'm bringing these books and looking at them I'm kind of keeping in mind that I wanted some of those very oldest reading school textbooks to be gathered on the top and then the rest of them I'm making sure that they're turned up correctly the right way and I do appreciate seeing a neutral arrangement where the books are turned around and all you see is just the paper page edges I think that's pretty but I really love seeing the covers the spine to me is artistic <laughs> it's beautiful I love the old um, typography I love the colors I, I guess my my sensibilities lean more toward colors than neutrals but as, as I go through the process I'll switch some from shelf to shelf in order to make it grouped in a way that I like and also to blend the colors as well and the very top shelf has the shorter book I just wonder how many little children's hands held those readers and learned to read from them and I wonder if there were children who just loved school and loved learning to read and there were probably children who were just counting the minutes as they dragged by so they could be free from that uh, <laughs> the harassment of being made to learn how to read I just it makes me giggle I, I don't know why things like that come to my mind but they really do I have more books than this I have above that opening between this is the corner of my living room and then that edge of that doorway you can see to my left that goes into my very small foyer and above that arch not it's not actually arched it's just a big opening between the rooms I have a shelf with my oldest books of all that are from the 1800s and yes I have picked these up at thrift stores some of those very old ones I might have paid you know closer to five dollars per book but mostly now that's the first Bible in my stack of Bibles that I'm gonna put up there um, and there's the second one how cute I didn't I didn't like the way the, the spine looked on that Bible but I did find all of these books one by one and most of them were a dollar or fifty cents and most of the Bibles in the little stack of Bibles that, that you're gonna see on the very top most of those Bibles were free because many of the thrift stores in my area just 
just give away Bibles because they're Bibles. And most people, what's funny to me is most people will pick up the new Bibles. And I can understand why if they want to use it for their main reading Bible. But I I am compelled to rescue the ones that are so old that some lovely, wonderful old man or old woman has held it in their hands and you can see the the front and back covers have a crease where their little hands held it and it's an extra bonus if there are any underlined verses or little words written in the margins. I don't think people wrote in their Bibles as much a long time ago as is the tradition or um, as the habit now. I write in my Bible because I feel it is my guidebook for this world. And when I learn something, I make a note of it. (laughs) When I find some kind of wisdom that I am very sure is applicable to my life, I need to know about it. And it helps me when I'm referring to my Bible to see my notes from when I was hearing something taught uh, at church, you know, during preaching or Sometimes if I'm doing a Bible study and the Holy Spirit just drops a nugget of wisdom and opens it up to me so that I understand it in a fresh way that I haven't understood it before, that's just wonderful. I love when that happens and I often make notes and um, put it in such a way that I can remember what I was reading about and what I was praying about and thinking about at that time. The stack on the left of my bookcase um, is mostly, I think there's a set of some kind of books in a box. It's a cased set. There's a reader, but the ones on the left still have their jackets. I normally don't care for jackets on old books because the linen covers are so beautiful to me I really want to see those worn linen covers and you know you don't you don't find books with jackets on them very often but but the ones that I do find that have a pretty um, artistic jacket and I'm okay if they're tattered a little bit and faded and crumbling at the edges that that just kind of adds to the the authenticity for me Now that little book is short and I'm realizing that I want it on the top shelf, but the top shelf's already full, so I'm going to have to make a decision. I'm going to have to slip one out. (laughs) And, you know, you become attached to things and that can be bad, but that can be fun and good too because you begin to feel a sense of comfort and relaxation to see things that you feel like you're building a life around or just alongside. Not that they're the focus, but they're kind of a first-hand witness to what's happening in your life. Not that books can witness a thing, but you know that they've been there in the background. Okay, we're still switching things around. Sometimes it's because of height. Sometimes it's because of color or subject matter. Not subject matter as much. But I do stop to read the spine to see what it is, what what it's about, to see if it's going to be something I'm uh, super interested in. And I do read can't read all of them there's so many but I do read some of them or I'll sit and open it up and read a chapter or a few pages because it's almost always written in a very old-timey sounding way kind of like when um, if you if any of you have a copy of my utmost for his highest I love that book and They've recently translated it into something that's more like modern English, contemporary sounding. But I still like, I still like to hear 
the old timey way it's spoken or written and you kind of have to concentrate a little bit to understand it and sometimes i'm just i'm just in the mood for that i kind of want to let my brain really focus and dig into it these are textbooks one was a an alabama history book that i think was from the early 70s that yellow one and there's a health book and a science book several others that i just thought were and they're bigger you know than most of the books in this collection here so i put them to the side on top of the encyclopedias oh there's a dictionary um a junior dictionary like middle school age it looked like and it looked like it was from the 1960s Well, has everyone enjoyed seeing the back of my messy bun and the back of my t-shirt? And um, <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. And my camouflage leggings. You know, it, it was one of those days when I bought those leggings. Um, I don't normally wear camouflage, but they looked soft. They were a good price. And I was like, you know, maybe I'll just buy those. And I wear them around the house because they don't cause me any pain they don't challenge me in any way they don't make me have to suck my stomach in <laughs> for the sake of vanity i just get to do the thing i'm doing and not really worry about being bound up you know i'm i'm over it i'm over being bound up at 57 i'm ready to be comfortable i do want to look as cute as i can reasonably when i go out of the house but even then I kind of want it to feel like I'm wearing pajamas in public. I don't want it to look like I'm wearing pajamas in public, but I kind of want it to feel like that. And that's one reason why I really love soft, loose dresses. I wear them with um, little biker shorts under, and they're so great. Ah, do you see my Bibles? Those have been collected over time. And the one on the very top belonged to my great-grandmother. And we put those beautiful pieces of lace trim around it. Not We didn't dare glue it to the Bible. We, we created it so that it could slip on and off. But for 10 years now, um, that's how long my daughter Mallory has been married. We, we created that uh, so that it could sit in a special place at her wedding. And I think we took some pictures of the rings sitting on that little Bible. The, um, the old-timey glasses are reproduction, but I, somewhere in my world, I do have an authentic pair. And um, what I've been doing over the past several days since my daughter Olivia and her husband and her baby have moved into their own home, they were with us for a year and we were all scrunched up and as i'm expanding back out into my space now that they've moved forward and they've got a good place to live i'm discovering things and i, I almost holler out loud because it's things that i've wanted to find and been thinking about and then there are things that i completely forgot i had and it's like a brand new first time i ever laid eyes on it moment <laughs> that's really fun too this corner looks like it's just begging for me to sit down and read some pages out of those old Bibles or any of those very interesting books, even the little textbooks. You can see into my foyer there. And right now, I change things all the time, but right now I've got some vintage prints you just can barely see peeping over there. This was filmed during the solar eclipse, by the way. Not that it made any difference to my lighting on the inside, but every time I looked out the window or opened the door for the dogs, uh, it looked so odd outside. It looked like a fluorescent lighting out there. 
here in Alabama, we, we got, I think, an 86% eclipse. Those little tiny books, I created those. I printed out some uh, vintage book covers. That was a fun little project. There's a video of it somewhere. Teddy bear is from the not early 1960s. It is not mine, but I found it for five dollars at a thrift store, and there was enough of the shredded tag for me to be able to look it up and see what kind of bear <laughs> and what era. I could tell it was old. All the arms and legs move, the head moves, turns. It's posable. It's so cute. Those Bibles are so tattered, and I love them that way. Now the one on the top is my great-grandmother's, and a lot of the other little black Bibles that are so worn and tattered came from thrift stores who had them on a special shelf that said free Bibles. And you know, every time I thrift, I try to remember to glance through the book section just to see if I can spot a very old book. And you don't find one every time you look because the ones that are truly old from, well, I guess my favorite, my, my favorite look is the vintage linen cloth covered books. I bought that lamp with, just like it is with the that dried potpourri in there. I'm sure it's so old it has no scent whatsoever, but, you know, that's what's in it, and that's, you know, subject to change sometime in the future, but in the meantime, man, I interrupted myself, and now I can't remember what I was saying. It was about the linen covers. Oh, look at all the readers, the old-timey books. That is fascinating to me. So fascinating. I, I'm drawn to it. As a child, I didn't see my mother reading very often, but she really fostered reading in me. And uh, the Scholastic News, news uh, well, it was like a little pamphlet. You could order a book, maybe once every couple of months, that little pamphlet would would come out and would get to bring it home. My mother would always let me pick out a book, sometimes two books, and I appreciate her for that because she could she could see that I loved reading. The Cane Mutiny that I picked up on the beach vacation a couple of years ago where my sisters and I took my mother to the beach. We stayed several days. It was so fun. Oh, I, w I remember now what I was going to say. I don't like to buy books that are newer than the 1950s. Occasionally, I will pick one up if it's 1967, because that's my birth year. Oh, look at that set. Uh in the middle toward the bottom that was just a gorgeous set of classic books that Ben bought for me I mentioned that I loved how they looked and he got them for me I thought that was so sweet a few years ago he did that and I let that one be on top that's one that I need to open it up and see what in the world that even means no trumpet before him shows a man in the pulpit preaching so you know I'm sure there's there's a special meaning to that phrase oh the coon hunters handbook that's pretty amazing I should get a camera with a stabilizer on it 
so it's a little smoother for my viewers slowed it way down hopefully nobody's getting seasick from watching it there's the Williamsburg kettle I wonder who held it I wonder who boiled water in it and poured it out for tea or for cooking or for who knows what who knows what look at the tattered edges of those jackets be adding books as I find them and pulling out others that are not as old There's some readers digest condensed books on the bottom and although they are kind of old they're probably from the 1970s but I make an exception for them I love the way they look the, the, the spine the binding I love the patterns on the covers but I will be glad to substitute those books for something older. That garden stool, I have two of them. One's on each side of my fireplace. And that particular one had to have a, a hunk glued back into it because when Joel Tanner was a baby, when he was about two years old, I was gathering things up for us to go camping and there was a big pile of stuff that I was about to take outside and I had laid a little hammer <laughs> on the pile of things that I was moving out and he picked up the hammer and whacked that garden stool and took out a hunk um, as big as a sandwich <laughs> but I couldn't I couldn't blame him he was two years old and I'm the one that left the hammer but I see the piece glued back in and it makes me smile every time now because now that two-year-old boy is 22 years old <laughs> and I love him ever so much I wish that YouTube had a way for me to see pictures that you post because I'd love to see your vintage book collections. And I want to thank you for spending a half hour with me. I appreciate all the kind comments. I just think that the community we're building together here at my channel is so precious. I'm encouraged uh, so many times. Sometimes I'll go and read what you've said just for the joy of it. 